Being in a small town here in Nebraska, almost all of my friends had parents that ran some kind of a ag operation. I really couldn't see myself doing that. The path I could see forward was going away from it. I thought that I would be working in a field that was completely unrelated to agriculture. I was really focused on the creative aspect and the technology side and really following that path. Now I've, I'm really starting to follow my true passion, which is being an entrepreneur, having my own company, solving this big problem. To me, that is the American dream. My dad grew up in rural India, and so he always really liked the idea of going to an area that was rural and ag-based, so we ended up moving to Nebraska. That was the first time I'd ever seen snow in person, and it was cold. But I think the first thing I did, and my mom always tells the story is, I grabbed some snow and I made a snowball and I think I threw it at one of my sisters, actually. <laughs> I was probably eight and a half years old when we first moved to the United States. We went from a city of a few million people to a little town in the middle of Nebraska of maybe a few hundred people. Early on, I decided I was gonna take the woodworking class. However, I actually had no interest in woodworking. So I took the class and I asked the teacher that I had, instead of doing this woodworking project, could I build this uh, robotics kit? He thought it was a cool idea. I was fortunate in that I had people around me that allowed me to go those paths. You know, as a young kid just starting out in college, I was starting out down this track of engineering. And I actually struggled there because in my mind, I thought of engineering as this very creative process. I changed majors from an engineering student to more of an art student. And I really started going more towards the path of computer graphics. Some of the jobs I'd had before working at the university were more rigid, kind of corporate type of jobs. And when I got into that uh, position at the university working in the deal lab, all of a sudden, I was in an environment where they really valued creativity and they valued people who wanted to work on innovative things and come up with new ideas and new ways of doing things. So one of the early projects that I got put on, and I'm pretty sure I got put on it because I was the new guy, was a, a project with some animal scientists. And they wanted to take all this very technical information and put it online somehow so it could be useful to students and people in the meat industry. That's all great and everything, but what I proposed to the people working on the project was, well, what if we did a 3D animal that would be linked to all the information? And what we ended up doing essentially was medical scans of a beef animal. And then we took those medical scans and we were able to reconstruct out of those scans 3D geometry, we were left with a fully textured 3D beef carcass, basically, that you could take apart muscle by muscle, bone by bone, and all of those were linked up to the database of information. It was like a fully 3D interactive version of it. We would show this project and we would be invited to various cattle industry events, and we would get a really positive response. I remember this guy walked up to me after one of my talks and he said, wow, you're like an entrepreneur because you're really trying to take what you've done and you're trying to create new things out of this in this industry. And nobody would ever called me an entrepreneur before. I thought it was kind of interesting. I was like, oh, really? Am I an entrepreneur? So it was a really special thing happening. I was starting to think of, well, how could I form a company around this? I was fortunate to be accepted into a startup accelerator where they really emphasize before you actually try to build something, maybe you should talk to your customer base and really dig into what their problem is. Instead of digging into the technical issues, I had to first focus on the people issues. A major problem for the cattle industry, a lot of animals get sick. Also, there's the resulting death loss from that. One out of every five animals 
uh, will develop some symptom of illness. The result is, is that the industry experiences a huge loss every year. In the United States, it's like over $3 billion, sick animals and the resulting death loss and all the various costs associated with it. So it's a massive business problem. So in talking to feedlot managers, what I learned was they would actually go out every day and what they would have to do is they would have to visually scan pen after pen of animals, thousands of animals, and try to pick out the sick ones just visually. And that seemed like a really odd way to go about it to me. The animals, because of their you know, instinct of protecting themselves from predators, they try to hide their symptoms from humans. It's a pretty basic conflict of interest. And so how do you pick up those types of symptoms? Well, you can have a temperature sensor, you can have measurements of the activity of the animals, and that's really what I decided to focus on. We're able to get the movements of the animal anywhere from head movements to movements that are a result of it walking or limping and doing comparisons not only against that individual animal's own data, but then comparing it against other animals in the same pen. All those types of things can be picked up by a sensor on the ear, which is exciting because that's the beginning stages of what could lead to telemedicine in animal health. Not having grown up in the cattle industry myself, I was apprehensive about being the technology guy and going into this industry. Obviously, they would see me as an outsider for sure. I mean, I didn't really dress like them or look like them. But actually what I found was once they understood that I was trying to help them, they actually became pretty receptive to the idea. They actually would be very open to talking with me and telling me more about some of the problems they were experiencing. And I was able to have some really very real conversations with some of these uh, cattle producers about what they experience in their day-to-day -day lives. Animals, you know, they're not gonna be unnecessarily suffering through illnesses. We as beef consumers will probably have a better food supply. What that means is we're gonna be changing the industry. I think everyone has a desire to have an impact on the world and be able to change it somehow for the better. And for me, this is that thing.